I bring greetings from my wife and children from America and Canada. They love you and this is their home church. They were born and uh, nurtured in their early years of their faith here. And when I come here, I feel I have come home. Because this is my Bethel. This is the altar that has spoken in my life. Wherever I have been. And I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank Bishop Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice. For such ministers that they have been in our lives. And we bless the name of the Lord for them and what God is doing. They are our children, uh, they know them not as bishop and uh, pastor. They know them as dad and mom. And we thank God for that. And so they bring greetings to you. And the church in Atlanta, they are praying for us. And they are believing God, that God is still working great things in our midst. And I thank God because this is a very dynamic church. That means it is progressive. That means you are allowing God to work in your lives to will and to do. His very good pleasure. And it is evident in the things that are happening here and in the community of Zimmerman and regions beyond. Uh, today I want to share with you about restoration. I realize the theme of uh, of this year is restoration and demonstration. In that, it is the year of restoration and demonstration. What is this that you are looking forward to being demonstrated in your life and being restored in your life? Last week, my father-in-law called, as we were having a conversation with my father-in-law over, over the phone, I told him I was looking forward to going to visit with him and he told me how delighted he was that I would be visiting. And he told me when you come, I will show you a chair that I constructed or built in 1957. That chair is almost my age mate. We are almost the same age with the chair. And he said, when I, well, before you come, I am working on it. And I'm restoring it. Because my father, I gathered, has an idea of the chair that he constructed. The way it looked and how it functioned. And now he told me he's restoring it. And then he will, gi he will give me more instructions and information about that seat or that chair. When we think about restoration, brethren, what is this that we are talking about in your life and in my life. In the midst of the challenges that you encounter every day. Because the problems of yesterday have been taken care of. And if they are not taken care of, they are being managed. There are new problems that are coming. About a month ago, we were never talking about coronavirus. But now there is a virus out there that has scared the world because it has claimed several deaths. And there are other tragic things more than coronavirus. For those that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a tragedy to be faced with it because you do not know what to do. But friends... When those challenges come, what do you do in the event of those things? What do you do when nothing appears to add up? What is this that you are asking God to restore to you? Because the restoration is a return back of something that had been taken away from you. If somebody took away my jacket, Restoration would mean he is bringing it back to me so that I can be uh, probably as smart as I am 
Or if somebody had taken my money, that money then ought to be restored back to me so that I can be and feel probably as wealthy or as cool as I am. That is what it means to be restored. If you have lost your mind, to be restored, it means that your mind has come back. And now it can function as it was meant to function. If your business has gone down and it is not thriving, it is not functioning. Restoration means your business has begun to catch up the systems that you had set in place for it to, to thrive and make profits, not losses. If you are raising up your children and you are believing God that those children are going to become godly seed as it is your mandate as parents that you raise your children to be a godly seed for that is the assignment that God has given you. Restoration means that they are going to grow in the nature and the fear of God and that they will fear God, they will honor God. Restoration means, according to Psalms 112, it means that you are going to be blessed and that you are going to thrive in everything that you do. Restoration means your company will be properly chosen. That means you will not find yourself relating with people that are draining you from whom you are and taking away and every day praying for a restoration of your faculties and of your faith. Because your faith and your ability to relate with God has been so much distorted by the company because of language and the things that you do together. Restoration therefore means that those things that belong to you lightly so that you can function in the purposes and the assignment that God has given you, that they are going to be restored. Many times, when we talk about restoration, you think, I have never experienced this. Then how can this be restoration? But restoration is because when God created you, he had a perfect plan for your life. And your restoration means that you are going to be restored into what God intended for you. Without the intervention of sin and the fallen nature of man. Restoration is coming back to the original. Another meaning of restoration is to restore back a monarch or a ruler or a king to his rightful position in the event of a war. So when we are talking about restoration, the scriptures inform us in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that in the beginning God and so, when you want restoration, my brother, my sister, so that you can be fully equipped to deal with the challenges of life every day. And your challenges include your own body, your own health, your own life, your own mental facility or faculties, your visions and your dreams. The Bible says in the beginning, that means that is where you begin. You begin with God because you understand by faith that you came from God and your origin is God. And because your origin is God, God wants to be back in your originality. God wants you to be. The Bible says in the beginning, the world was without form. Let's go to Genesis. Please shoot it for me there. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. The scriptures begin to inform us about the state of affairs at that time. But they say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But he says 
that the earth was without form. That means the earth was without structure. And further, that it was void, it was empty. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, when the scriptures talk about God and the Spirit, in that time we, we see a God who thrives in order and in structure and form. That means God's activities and things, God likes predictability. That means you don't say, I don't know what God is up to. Because God will reveal himself to you regarding any situation in your life. And the spirit of God, however dark, however formless, however void your situation might be, and the Spirit of God has been allowed to make his or her habitation. The Spirit of God has her or his habitation in that environment. Something is going to happen. And what will happen is that there will be a restoration. There will be a creation there will be a beginning of life. Verse 3 says this. When God has seen all that, he said, let there be. And that is a refrain we begin to see until all the creation is complete. God speaks his word. He said, let there be. And so we see God unctioning his word into creativity. He says let there be. And whatever he said. It, that is what it became. Now when you understand. That you have a relationship with God. And then that God is in you. But how is God in you? The Bible also in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. The Bible says and God said. Let us make man in our own image. And in our own likeness, let us make him. If you are made in the image and in the likeness of God, then that means your source is God. Your father is God. And that is why Jesus taught us, when you pray, pray like this. Our father who art in heaven, our father who is not visible, our father whom we cannot touch physically, our father who is in the spiritual realm. That is your father and that is my father. And so when you say, I want to be like my father. I have the DNA of my father. I have the likeness of my father. And the likeness of my father is to take dominion, is to nurture, is to make things as I want them to be. I know this might be surprising to a lot of people. But let me tell you friends. That God is not a dictator. God is not a despot. That he comes into your life and begins to do things. That you don't allow him to do. Because God is a spirit. And he operates in the spiritual realm. But manifests himself in the physical. Only when he is allowed. And so whatever things you want in, in your life. You must allow God to do it. Because God is a spirit. And when he created you and me. He says this. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every clipping thing that clips on earth. My brother, my sister, 
authority has been given to you. And that authority, God did not take away, but it had been given. Brethren, we are living today in the best and in the worst of our times. Those are not my original words. I wouldn't claim them, but they were said by a man, a playwright. And those, what those words mean even for our day is that things are bad. For those people that when problems come, they don't know how to deal with them because they have a blockage of their minds because they cannot be able to think beyond those problems. The word of faith says that you are an overcomer and a winner in all your battles. But what is this word of faith? It is believing in God and that God is able to come into your situation. And that you have the mind of God. As the word of God says in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Let this mind be in you. That which was in Christ Jesus. What is this mind that was in Christ Jesus that God wants you to have? What is this mind? John, the, this, the apostle, captures it very well. In the book of John chapter 1 and from verse 1 and 3, he says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Saying that Jesus was actually in the creation, and he was involved in the creation, and that God, now Christ, when you have believed him, you believe that God is in you. And because God is in you, then you are living in a world of unlimited possibilities. John says he came to his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons and the daughters of God. That means you and me. If you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been given the power. You have been given the authority. That had been taken away from you. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. When you lost your dominion. When you lost your control. That the main mission of Jesus Christ was to come and reveal God to us. And when God, he had revealed God to us, and you believed his word, when you believed his word, the Bible says this, then you are given that which had been taken away from you, and therefore your restoration is the power to function as the son or a daughter of God. And so when you are thinking about restoration, what is it that God intended for you? Because the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 10 that you are the craftsman. You are the hard work of God. You were thought about God and created by God. And there is an assignment and a purpose for your life. And that assignment, God wants it accomplished. And you are not like anybody else. And so you cannot imitate what I am doing and say, that is my purpose. Because you have a specific assignment that God made for you. How are you going to do that? The Bible says, when you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you have received and believed, that means it is by faith. And you have received Jesus Christ. Then you are given the power to become the son and a daughter of God. And then your word becomes the word of God. And you can speak to those empty situations. Those formless situations. Those situations that are not serving the purposes of God in your life. In this year... When restoration and demonstration is a theme. 
I want to throw a challenge to each and every one of you. What is this that you want God to do for you this month, the month of February? What is it that you want to God to do for you this week? Because if you live without a plan, if you live without a purpose, you are surely destined to fail. If you don't plan, and it is biblical to plan, the Bible says we plan and God makes it to pass. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, the Bible says, I will stand on my watch and hear what the Lord will say. And whatever he says, I will write it down. My brothers and my sisters, the Lord does not have the plan, a, pl a single plan for all of you. You are plan and for your family and for your estate is individual. You might be achieving it collectively, but it is individual. What is it that you want God to do for you? What is it that you are believing God for? Because God, that is what God wants to restore. God wants to restore to you the mind with which he created you. That creativity, that facility, that faculty of mind, that facility, that way of thinking that does not know impossibilities. You see a problem and say, come here, my opportunity. Because in this, the Lord wants to glorify himself. The Lord wants to demonstrate who he is by the way that I'm going to deal with you. Because even though my body might wear away, yet in this one thing I know, I know that my Redeemer lives and that he is coming in my situation to deliver me out of it. And that you can say like Daniel, whether I go through it or not, whether it takes me or not, yet one thing I know, that my God is able to do that which he has purposed to do. And if you are able to do that, then God comes in and says, well done my son, I am going to glorify myself in this situation. What is it that you are dreaming about? Because it is not about that kingdom there. It is about the kingdom in your life. It is about your family. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a lifestyle. A lifestyle that is centered on the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That means your life is Christ-centered. That means you are informed in your decisions. By knowing Christ the truth. And when you have known Christ the truth. Then that truth sets you free many times from yourself. Because many times we are hindrances ourselves. Because of our level of thinking. No wonder Jesus Christ when he came he said repent. And let me help you my friends. The word repent does not mean just, does not mean confess. The word repent means change your thinking. The word repent means change your mode of thinking. And think like sovereign. Think like the daughter of a king. Think like the daughter of God and a son of God. And when you think like the daughter and a son of God, you live in the limb of unlimited possibilities. Because whatever you believe God for, that you can take God, that you can test the integrity of God by letting him prove himself. Many times we do things and things we are working for God. But God actually wants to work for you. God wants to work for you. You allow God to work for you. And in this year, whatever it is that has been lost, God wants to restore it. God wants to restore it. Actually, in the book of Joel chapter 2, 
When the Bible talks about restoration, restoration is not about you receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit only. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a climax after your humanity has been restored. After that which has been stolen from you has been restored. Then the Bible says, after that, I will fill all flesh with my Holy Spirit. And then the Bible talks about the gifts and the operations and the functions of the Holy Spirit. But before then, it is a restoration of order. Is it your health? That you can go to God and tell God, God, I am giving you permission to heal this body. Because this is not mine. I am not holding it anymore. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the temple of God. And because it is your temple, Lord, heal it so that you can function in it and glorify yourself in it. If it is my mind, Lord, this is your mind. Restore it so that you can use it. Our restoration, the first process of restoration is the restoration of who you are. Who are you and what defines you? Probably your family has been defining you all these years. Probably your community has been defining you all these years. But God wants to give you an identity. And the identity is this. You are a son and a daughter of God. And your privileges are unlimited before the father. And that God wants to deliver you from yourself. So that you can know what God has in stock for you. Once that is restored, God wants to restore your provisions. The systems that God set in place for you. God wants to restore them. So that you will not lack so that you will not live in pain, so that you will not live in agony, so that you will not live in strife. Relationships would be restored. And when relationship, relationships are restored, because you are not yourself, again, our faith, Christianity, is not practiced in isolation. That means you can be the best Christian in a closet. But Christianity is not practiced in the closet. It is practiced in the community. It is practiced in the family. It is practiced in your relationship with the Father. By you bringing forth the fruit that show who you are. That means you do because you are. You don't become because you do. That means you give because you are a believer and you love God. You don't become a good Christian by tithing. But you tithe because you are a Christian. You don't give alms because you, by giving alms you become good. But you give because you are good and God has already touched you. That means you are already transformed from the inside. And because you are transformed from the inside, the others will see by your actions. And when the father sees that, the things that you do from the inside, then your reward is great because our father is a rewarder. Whatever it is that you do, for somebody else, whatever it is that you invest, not because you want a reward, but you want to please your father, our father who is in heaven. Then the Bible says he will reward you. Even when you pray and fast, you pray and fast not to become a better Christian. 
You pray and fast to discipline your body so that it aligns itself and your mind with the will and the purposes of God. And so those things that you do because you are God rewards you. Why? Because God is a rewarder of those that seek him and seek him diligently. When there is order in your life, when there is order in your life, God is pleased and is glorified. How will God demonstrate himself in your life this year? What do you want to do? Some of you want to get money. Some of you want to get wealthy. Is it that you may get a V8? Do you want to get wealthy so that you can live in a big house? Those things are good. But you want to get wealthy so that God may glorify himself and he may demonstrate whom he is. When they remember who you are and where you have come from, they will be motivated. They will acknowledge that there is a God in heaven. If it is brother so and so, and the way I know him and where he has come from, surely there must be a God in heaven. That is a testimony that God wants to create in your life. When he says, go and make disciples of all nations, that you may be my disciples and my witnesses. What is it to be a witness of God? That means you are uh, an alibi. You are something that is displayed in the world as an evidence of something. That means as you walk around, you are saying, come and see what the Lord has done. Look around and see the faithfulness of God. Brethren, whenever I come here home, I come home with one statement in my mind. I am coming back home to this altar every moment. Not to bring to you a new revelation. But to come and say, our God is a faithful God. Our God is a faithful God. And he is a rewarder of those that seek him and seek him diligently. In the book of Genesis chapter, 31, chapter 1 and verse that 1. The Bible says after God had created everything, he looked around and said it is very good. As you think about your restoration, first do an evaluation, identify your needs. Identify where you are and where you want to go. Identify the crutch that is not working. Identify the eye that is becoming blind. Identify that organ that is failing. Identify the mind that is not able to comprehend things. Identify the eye that is losing and dimming. Identify the business that is not thriving. Identify your children that are running, going astray. Identify your family, your husband or your spouse whose warmth and relationship is becoming cold. Identify the areas that are getting weaker in your life that are not a testimony of the goodness of the Lord. If you are lacking, it is not the will of God. The testimony of David should be your testimony. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because he will lead me and guide me and protect me and preserve me. And so every area of your life that is not meeting those, tell God, God restore to me. Let your Christianity not be a way of coming to church every Sunday. Let it be seen in your life. Let it be seen in your office. Let it be seen wherever you are. As we come to wind up, how is restoration going to happen in your life? Restoration is promised. He says, I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. 
and the canker worms and all those even the locusts in this season in John 15 from verse 1 to 8 Jesus says I am the vine and you are the branches and my father is the gardener that means you know your relationship with Jesus Christ is a strong bond. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And not only a relationship, because you are the temple of God and Jesus lives in you. And we can say Christ in you, the hope of glory. That means Christ is in you and is waiting for a manifestation. For you to believe him so that he can be glorified in your life. And how is he going to be glorified in your life? He's going to be glorified in your life when your problems are sorted out. Abide in God and then God will abide in you. That means you must be in order for you to be fully restored. You must be a serious student of the word of God. Read the word of God. Memorize the word of God. For every challenge, address it with the scripture. For every situation, address it with the mind of God. And the mind of God is the scripture. When you address it like that, then you can be assured that God and his integrity will come to fight for you. Because when you do not stand by the scriptures, on every problem, on every challenge, you are standing on it, on your wishes and your desires. And your desires, and backed by the scripture, your desires outside the scripture are a rebellion to God. And they will not be honored. And so what do you do? You ensure that whatever it is you are doing, you are doing it in partnership with God. And not only in partnership with God, but you are allowing God to work through your life. In that very same passage, John chapter 15, the Bible says this. God wants you to increase and to multiply in whatever it is that you are doing. As we read in the book of Genesis, God does not like stagnation. If you find you have become stagnant, if you find that you are not moving, God is unpleased because he wants you to ask whatever it is that you want. Can you imagine God giving you an open check? How many of you are willing to use your open checks? Let me see by a show of your hands because I know all of you would want to use your open checks. Imagine One of the leaders of the nation or one of the rich men gives you an open check and tells you, whatever it is that you need, write the amount. That is what God has done in this particular passage. He has said, whatever it is that you want, it is an open check. If you abide in my word and my word abide in you, I am giving you an open check. You ask for it and I'll give it to you. I stand here to tell you this, brethren. I have used that open check many times. I have stated it here before. Today I'm not stating any of them. But I am telling you this. The open check is available to you even today. What is this that has been bugging your life? What is this that you feel it has constrained your life? Since you are a small girl, you believed God. Now you are a mother. You believed God. Some hair, some, some, some correlation of your hair is taking place. You are still believing God. You are getting seasoned. You are still believing God. Let me tell you, friends, that God inside of you is not aged. Your God is not aging. Your God has not changed. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
that whatever you have believed God for, he is able to do that for your life. I want us to rise up. I want us to rise up. In this time, because I want you to be believing, to believe God for something in your life. It is in things that God is seen. It is not in philosophy. You know philosophy ni maneno mingi. Watu wanaongea hawaelewani. Unajaribu kueleza, mwingine anasema hivi, mwingine anasema ninaamini because our faith without results is fake. And because we want results, ni kitu gani unamtarajia Bwana akutendee mwaka huu? Ni mambo gani unataka Bwana akufanyie? Kwa sababu yeye ni Mungu mwenye uwezo yote. He is the God of impossibilities and in him there is nothing impossible. And because in God there is nothing impossible, I want us to pray for you. The Bible says wherever Jesus went, he healed all types of diseases. That is our first encounter with Jesus Christ. When he was about healing, I want us to start there. If you are in our midst and you are sick, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray with you. I want you to give God permission to heal you. I told you, God will never do anything unless you give him permission. Wherever you are, out there, up there, down here, and you have a sickness, you are sick. I want to pray for you and I want to believe God that next Sunday you will write on a piece of paper that you have a testimony because of what God has done in your life. And those testimonies, once, once, testi once confirmed, they will be given to the church. That you have actually, you were sick and now you are healed. You were lame and now you can run and walk. I want to pray with you. If you are there in our midst and you are unwell, please raise up your hand. 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 Please make your way to the altar. Why do you want to make your way to the altar? As you come, believe God for your healing. As you come, believe God for your restoration. This is the year of restoration. This is the year of restoration and God is going to restore you. God is going to heal you. God is going to deliver you. It doesn't matter how long it has lingered in your life. It shall be well. You will be healed and it will be a testimony in this community. It will be a testimony in your family. It will be a testimony in your school. It will be a testimony to your colleagues. It will be a testimony in the business. It will be a testimony everywhere that our God is a healer. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals all our diseases, all our sicknesses in Jesus' name. Our Lord is a healer and he is going to heal you. He said, call unto me when whatever it is, I will do it unto you.